War rages in Europe. While Woodrow Wilson has used his first term to push a number of progressive laws, <clears throat> such as the income tax and Federal Reserve, Charles Evan Hughes has resigned from the Supreme Court to unite his party and, design and deny a second term. Wilson will emphasize the U.S. non-involvement with World War I and his legislative achievements. Hughes must balance the old guard and progressive wings of his own party or cast one overboard entirely. <coughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to a video. Today we're playing the new campaign trail, 1916 edition. So, yes, we are trying to stop Woodrow Wilson's second term. And I think the best way to do that, well, we got two options, but I think the one that's going to be a little more fun is absolutely trying to sink this guy. <clears throat> so, Woodrow Wilson won in a 1912 landslide and has passed an array of legislation in his first term in 1916. However, foreign affairs are beginning to dominate. A loud minority of Democrats are aggressively anti-war and expect the same from Wilson. Can Wilson make the case that his passage of an antitrust act, a child labor law, an income tax amendment, and the Federal Reserve Act all warrant re-election? His recent remarriage has also fed some gossip. So Thomas R. Marshall is the vice president. So the two have had icy relations. However, keeping Marshall the ticket would preserve party unity and avoid a distracting storyline from the campaign. Marshall was previously the governor of Indiana and is popular in that state. Politically, he is more moderate than Wilson has been. <coughs> Newton Baker has served as Secretary of War since the early part of 1916. Some advisors are encouraging Wilson to replace Marshall with Baker. The two have a much better working relationship, and Baker was formerly the mayor of Cleveland, Ohio. His nomination may help in, in Ohio, but it would also create headlines and arouse some Marshall supporters. Let's do that. Let's switch running mates. <clears throat> okay, how are we doing electorally? That's not too big of a gap. Hughes is winning, but yeah, we could probably do this. What themes will you emphasize is you accept the Democratic nomination beginning your campaign. Under my first term, we've accomplished more progressive reform. Much has changed, but I stand as committed. Uh... Attack the party. There's nothing wrong with attacking the Republicans. As 1916 begins, you have a vacancy to fill in the Supreme Court. Advisors are recommending Louis Brandalis, a choice that is sure to be controversial. What are your thoughts? Uh, is not in question. But he is too radical to be considered for a court opening. I'm prepared to st stand behind him. Let's go for that. <clears throat> the nomination battle was contentious, but progressives across the country have noticed your commitment. Okay. So, no clear majority. Okay, let's go to Tech. We have no shot of flipping Texas, do we? We could probably lose South Dakota. I want North Dakota. Uh, the Democratic Convention erupted into spontaneous cries of he kept us out of war as you were nominated. Do you plan to campaign on this position, or will you add some nuance to it? He used this as a big thing. <clears throat> um, this is probably the most opposite effect, so let's do that. Uh, what motivated you, motivated you to place Newton Baker on the ticket? Uh, he's a progressive choice. Best man for the job. Go. Okay, good. We are now losing the forces of Pancho Villa. have killed over 30 Americans in separate incidents. And have even launched a raid into New Mexico. How will you respond to this as president? Okay, is this something? This doesn't really seem to be a big issue. <coughs> um, okay. 
Okay, do you support the level of preparedness established by the recent National Defense Act? There we go, we need to say we need more. Okay, what would be your position on the women's suffrage question? <clears throat> okay, women's suffrage. So that'll help us in the South. Uh-huh. All right. I don't plan to address it this campaign. You have opposed a federal farm credit system in the past, <clears throat> but a Farm Loan Act is being pushed through Congress again this year. Will you support it this time? Let's flip-flop on the issue. Okay. Uh, as September approaches, the nation is at serious risk of a national rail strike. Um, I don't see an active need. <clears throat> a vicious railroad strike just weeks before the election clouds the campaign. Many accuse you of being ineffectual and vaguely anti-union. Do you have any statements to make about the Federal Reserve Act? Hmm. Uh, let's attack our own policy. There we go. Will you sign the Revenue Act of 1916, which would increase the federal, which would in, uh, increase the income tax? <coughs> I support it. Let's go with this one. How much do you plan to highlight the creation of the Federal Trade Commission as an accomplishment? Um, let's see. There we go. And okay. Do you have a position to take on the calls for the prohibition of alcohol as you campaign this fall? Okay, is that an issue? Economics doesn't appear to be a big issue. But we're going to reject it. <clears throat> Do you support the Clayton Antitrust Act, which was recently passed? Do you believe that unions should be exempted from antitrust regulations? Um, okay. okay. <clears throat> Theodore Roosevelt is hitting the campaign <laughs> trail this fall. However, he continues to make Belarus speeches about the war in Europe. Will you attack them for this? Uh, he's still a popular figure. This is a good opportunity. There we go. How much do you plan to push back against Southern obstructionism on a federal child labor law? Let's see. There we go. Okay. Let's go to the South. Do you plan to attack Charles Evans, Evans Hughes' stance on preparedness in the war with Europe? Uh, here we go. <clears throat> Do you plan to support the Jones Act, granting greater autonomy to the Philippines, along with a plan to grant independence? There we go. 
Okay. Would you support an American participation in a post-war League of Nations? Uh... There we go. There is still some hope that the nations of Europe would accept the United States as a moderator, that a peaceful solution could be found to the current war. Do you have any statements to make about the Federal Trade Commission? Let's attack our own policy. Okay. Virginia... We have certain groups in the United States for their own interests are trying to undermine American diplomacy and the global order. Uh, so broadly, oh, shoot, okay. <clears throat> Will you make any statements about the increased regulation of narcotics and stimulants such as cocaine? Uh, this isn't an important issue. Okay. <coughs> Do you support the recently ratified 17th Amendment? Uh, there we go. Are you willing to meet with German American and Irish American political leaders to discuss your beliefs? I refuse. Okay. Texas for oh okay wait okay um New York and <clears throat> sorry you've lost maybe 1912 was not just an anomaly an anomaly brought about by Roosevelt's grandstanding. It has been over 20 years since the Democrats defeated a united Republican Party, and that advantage shows no sign of abating. On the domestic front, let's hope your achievements survive. Internationally, no one can say what might happen next. In a novel move, you've offered to do your part by resigning immediately, rather than waiting until March 4th. There we go. <clears throat> so we mainly won the South. We won the South. Virginia, and New Hampshire. Uh, results by state. And here's the actual results. So, yeah, this game, obviously. But, real life, look at that number. That's extremely close. <clears throat> right? In real life, Woodrow Wilson got 277 electoral votes. Charles Evans Hughes got 254. So by today's standards of first to 270, Wilson barely got enough to win. <clears throat> now, to be fair, as of this time in history, Alaska and Hawaii had not joined the Union. But still, right? That's not a big gap. That's only 23 electoral votes separating the two. That has to be one of the closest electoral wins in history. I mean, the only two that come to my mind off the top of my head are the Rutherford Hayes Samuel Tilden election decided by one, <clears throat> and then Bush v. Gore obviously decided by Florida. So this is really interesting how close it was. I knew this was close. I didn't realize it was this close in real life. Either way, <coughs> that is me destroying... Woodrow Wilson's re-election chances. That is it for this video. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.